going to uh, uh, attempt to do a uh, rebuild on a um, Auto 5 here this morning. And the gun that we have picked just came in to the shop, and uh, the man wants a uh, clean and check over and uh, new springs if necessary and a rebuild. So um, this is a good specimen right here. So we're going to uh, pull it down and look at it and uh, replace the springs, and I'll show you how to uh, install your rebuild kit. Here's our kit right here. Now, first off, let's dismantle the gun. And we do that by removing the stock retaining screw. There again, you need three screwdrivers to take apart an Auto 5. This particular screwdriver here has a little wider tip on it uh, because the slot in the uh, stock retainer is uh, a little wider. And they sometimes they're really tight, so you need a screwdriver that's pretty blunt on the end uh, that'll... Uh, take that. Now I'm going to knock off my stock, put it over out of the way, and we're going to uh, tear down our receiver. Now there again, uh, you need fine slotted screwdrivers so you don't burr the screws on an Auto 5. There's nothing worse than burred screws. I sell a lot of screws because of that, but there's no need if you have the right screwdrivers. So let's remove our trigger plate. screws and then let's remove the front trigger plate screw now of course while you've got the gun torn down that's a good time to uh, give it a good cleaning and there's a couple other little uh, tweakings that uh, I'll show you here that's good for an A5 all right, so here's our trigger plate removed. This one is uh, pretty cruddy, a lot of junk in there, a lot of dirt. We're going to go scrub all that out. Uh, it uh, here's some looks like some bird feathers. That's always a good sign that somebody's been out successfully shooting. But we'll go clean that up in a little bit. Uh, it's uh, water's gotten down in the stock and. Uh, in the stock cavity and has rusted the uh, action tube doesn't hurt anything just looks a little unsightly when i'm uh, uh bluing these guns i always make sure that i uh clean off polish off the action tube yeah i'd be blasted off that's just part of reboot i don't like leaving rusty when i blew them let's go ahead and remove our carrier screws Now, these carrier screws are not very tight, so they're coming off easily. If they were tight, which a lot of them are, these are pretty, yep, these come right out. If they were tight carrier screws, I have a special screw driver in the kit that uh, fits the slots, the fine slots on the carrier screws. And uh, that's this screwdriver right here. Uh, sometimes they're really tight and other times like this one they're pretty loose now when I go clean this gun I'm going to buff and polish the carrier and all the parts now let's remove our action spring this is a part of the rebuild kit this is a pretty critical part and uh, remove the uh, pin that uh, holds goes through the action spring plug the early guns, the action spring plug was uh, wood. The uh, later models, they went to Japanese, which is much better. I'm sorry, not Japanese, but they went to plastic on the Japanese guns. This one's really tight because it's rusted in place. Uh, usually, when you take the pin out, you better hold on because it's going to come out on its own with with uh, a lot of gusto and. It's going to blast out across the shop. I'm looking on my junky bench for some end cutters to get a hold of this plastic plug because it's stuck in there. And I'm going to remove that. A lot of rust. This, this gun needs a rebuild pretty bad and a clean. 
there's our action spring removed. Now, if you're rebuilding the gun, you really don't need to go any further, but if you want to uh, pull it down and clean it, slide back the uh, uh, bolt until you can see the uh, pin. The pin goes through the bolt, goes through the locking block latch. Slide it back and drive it out through this, this hole. This hole is in the receiver for that reason only, to drive that pin out. Drive it out. There's your locking block latch and a spring. And slide the bolt forward and out. Now, down inside that receiver, it's pretty dirty. Uh, needs a needs a clean pretty bad. So we're gonna take it back in the solvent and give it a good cleaning before we uh, reassemble it. Um, then we'll uh, at, um, we'll step out and we'll take care of the polishing on these parts. I'm going to go scrub them back in another room, bring them back, and then we will assemble this gun and put our kit in, and I'll demo how to do that. All right, we are back. We have uh, stepped back into the back room and uh, and scrubbed out and swabbed out all the parts. I haven't dismantled this gun completely. Uh, uh, if you really want to go through them, take your uh, uh, mainspring screw out and pull that out and your uh, uh, safety latch and uh, just do it all. But then one thing on these, always double check and make sure the mainspring screw is tight. This one was a little loose <clears throat> tighten that down all right so here we go we are ready now to uh, start putting things back together your carrier spring goes like so and uh, a little drop of oil right on the tip of this uh, not this is just a, a synthetic motor oil I'm using a lot of lubrication factor to it that's what you want uh, Put a drop of oil on the carrier and on the uh, safety sear, spring and plunger. And this particular gun has a roller on the hammer, which means it's not all that required to put a drop of oil on this area right here. Uh, if it didn't have the, uh, the roller, I would uh, make sure I put a drop of oil on the uh, tip of the mainspring. Okay, so we're ready to go now. The uh, trigger plate assembly is all together and ready to go. Let's uh, reassemble our receiver. I'm, I'm not. This is not an in-depth uh, maintenance on this uh, particular gun. I'm basically just showing how to put the uh, spring kit in. Um, slide your bolt in. I have other videos out there that go into more depth on uh, the actual cleaning and and uh, rebuilding of uh, Auto 5. Slide your bolt partially in, and then lay your bolt operating handle in and slide them in together. Slide it back to where your hole in the bolt lines up with the cutout in the receiver. Put your locking block latch spring back in, and your locking block latch, and then replace the, uh, the pin. Now this pin does have a, a flat on one side an interruption so it goes in tight you don't want this pin to be loose they can work out and cause you a lot of grief so make sure you put it in and that that pin is going in nice and tight and it's just the way we want it let's um let's pull down our uh, let's get into our uh, rebuild kit get things out of the way and we'll talk about what comes in the kit. This particular kit, of course, is for a, a 12 mag, three inch gun. We open the kit, let's not get parts mixed up here. We pull the parts out. Here's our springs that are in the kit. 
this is our action spring and our recoil spring and our magazine spring our three shot plug now here's the uh, critical part here our uh, bronze pieces and friction rings uh, we have everything you'll need now this gun as I took it apart had one bronze piece and one friction ring that is very common I say half the guns that I buy that are magnum guns are missing rings so I have a lot of these on hand because we sell a lot of them. this is your action spring plug the new plastic replace the old wood, wood ones with the plastic now let's look at our original spring this is our action spring this original spring I took out of the out of the gun let's compare it see about an inch longer the new springs about an inch longer so that spring is collapsed somewhat it's not bad but it's collapsed and then let's put in our new uh, plug we are done there now let's um, go ahead and put these parts in the receiver and the way we do that and this action spring is next do that before you put your carrier back in that way your link this is your link you can see where it is and where it needs to be you slide your action spring in now this particular gun uh, I've taken a receiver back and I run a polisher through the inside of the tube to clean it out um, and it's sliding very freely which is what you want so you put in make sure your follower goes right against the link like so and then replace your uh, retaining pin uh, it's rusty because the tube's rusty but that doesn't hurt anything slide it in to where the hole lines up like so and then put in your retaining pin now that pin slides pretty freely in there but it won't come out because when it's in the stock, the, it, it can't really go anywhere. Okay, so we have now put in our new action spring. There again, a little drop of oil, not much, just a little oil on the action spring. Okay, let's put our carrier in. Put your carrier together. This is a two-piece carrier, a speed load system, they call it. Put it together and slide it right into the receiver like so and line up your holes I've, guys have asked the question so how do you know which uh, carrier screw goes in which side because they are fit screws and my answer is always the same you got a 50-50 chance of getting it right or wrong uh, you just put it in look at it so here's our carrier going in line it up and put a carrier screw in there again these screws aren't really tight so I'm using my uh, smaller screwdriver if it were if I had to really snug it down I would use the uh, screwdriver that's uh, supposed to be used on the uh, spring on the screw and then you tighten it down to see how it indexes up and I just happened to get hit it right on this one as you can see the uh, the uh, slots lined up perfectly and put the other one in Yep, it lines up fine. Now, generally speaking, if I was rebuilding a gun and I was going to go test it, I wouldn't put the lock screws in because uh, in case it doesn't work after I have rebuilt it or done something to it, done a mechanical repair, then to tear it back down, i got to take all the lock screws out. Well, this particular gun I know is going to work. It's in pretty good shape. It wasn't a very old gun. It had been cared for pretty well, so I know it's going to work. There's nothing broken in it. The springs are a little collapsed. They're not really, really too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and put my lock screws in and do it now. Snug them down. Now, to put in your, uh, before you put in your trigger plate, put a drop of oil on the carrier dog plunger and spring and on the dog on the carrier. A little drop of oil. And then put your trigger plate back in make sure your carrier 
spring is on the, the dog of the carrier, not behind it. Make sure it goes in. Go a little forward with your trigger plate. And then you can bring it back. Line up your front hole for your front trigger plate screw. Now, this trigger plate, and we've talked about this before, won't go up into position until you bring back the bolt just a little bit. And when you do that, it'll go right back up in position where it belongs. Let's put in our rear trigger plate screw, and uh, we'll go ahead and put our lock screws in. So we have replaced our action spring. Uh, the action spring is the spring that most guys have trouble getting in because they don't really have the screwdrivers to dismantle the guns. They don't know how. Anybody can put a recoil spring in because it just slides down on the magazine tube. But this action spring needs to be replaced. So here we are. Those barking dogs are probably going to come through on my video here. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the, uh, the uh, lock screws. Then we are finished with our, pretty much finished with our receiver. Now I'm doing a magnum because I want to show you the ring settings. And we will just go ahead and put on the stock because we're done with that. Go ahead and replace our stock screw. This one's not very tight. Some of the Japanese models now, I gotta warn you, they can really be tight. In fact, so tight you'll have to have an impact wrench to get them off. In my career, I've only had one I could not get off. Don't ask me how they put those things on. So tight at the factory, I don't know. But they do. And Browning had a special uh, machine they used to take it out and take them out with, had a big wheel on it. I don't have that here, I don't need it, you don't need it, but you might need an impact driver which means you'll probably destroy your screw taking it out, but that's on the Japanese guns. i got to warn you, they're tight. Okay, so we have uh, taken care of uh, everything, our action spring. Now, this particular gun has a really good crimp on the magazine tube. It's a Japanese gun, and they really do that. So that can cause you a little grief. Uh, We'll see if it'll come out. There again, my, my specialty tool is right down here on my bench, and it's just a nail driven into a board. You put it on, and you hook it, and you pull it out. That one came out. So if it didn't come out, if that uh, I couldn't get my uh, magazine retainer to come out, I was prepared to pay, take this old piece of barrel and drive it down in and take the crimp out just a, a tapered plug that takes a crimp out. All right, so now we're going to replace our, uh, our spring, our magazine spring. I'm looking at the old one and the new one. It's a little hard for you to see here maybe, but it's about, the old one's about an inch and a half short. So it's collapsed somewhat. Here, I'm gonna put it over here with our old old springs we're taking out. Now we're going to put in our new uh, magazine spring. I didn't take the follower out because it's crimped and I don't really need to take it out. But if I wanted to take it out and I was bluing the gun, I'd have to drive my little plug in there and take that crimp out. But I'm not bluing the gun, so I don't need to take it out. So we slide in our, our spring. Now, what'll make it easy to put uh, the spring on is to take your three-shot adapter and put it in and push that spring down. Now, if you have a plastic plug in your gun, the appropriate way to uh, put the uh, three-shot plug is on top of that. So put your retainer plug like so, and then put your uh, adapter right down through the middle of it. I'm kind of in an awkward position here because I'm trying to make it where I can show you uh, on the camera. So. Uh, otherwise, 
I would be holding it down on the bench in a different position. And this one I'm going to have to because I just can't seem to get in position here to drive it in. Let's try this. It's going in pretty hard. And it's peeling off some of the plastic because it is crimp. Now, uh, that doesn't hurt anything to get rid of that excess plastic. The uh, metal ones, uh, metal plugs, uh, retaining uh, uh, piece, the re uh, magazine retainer on the metal ones, the action, the three-shot adapter should be underneath the metal one. That's just the proper way to do it. You can put it on top. makes them easier to get to, but for some reason, that's the way they come from the factory. Okay, we're down now to a real critical part of our rebuild, and uh, um, we're going to uh, check out our, our action spring. Now, the spring I took out, this is the spring I took out, and this is my new spring. Uh, pretty much the same. They're really, this gun hasn't been used that much and the spring's not collapsed. So uh, we'll go ahead and put the new spring in it anyway because we, we got it. Here's the way you, here's the way you replace these parts, put them on. Slide your spring on and then we're down to the bronze pieces and the, and the friction rings. The way they go, is bevel up, slide it on. Slide on your bronze piece. It's beveled on both sides, so it doesn't make a bit of difference which way you put it. Now the next one goes with the bevel down, and that's why it's working on this bronze piece from both sides now. You see the bevel is squeezing that bronze piece from both, both, both ways. Now, the next one goes on with the bronze piece up, and then your bronze piece goes on. It's set up now to shoot three inch. Now your bevel is in your barrel. Uh, the barrel ring here, it's bevel, so it's squeezing on the bronze piece from this side. So these two bronze pieces are being squeezed by uh, barrel ring and uh, friction rings in all positions. Now, to shoot two and three quarters, and this is why many of these guns I get in are missing uh, uh, rings and a bronze piece usually is that uh, you take off two of the steel rings and one bronze piece and uh, just put back on your uh, one uh, friction ring bevel up and put on one bronze piece. Now the gun is set up to shoot two and three quarter. So uh, that's the way that works. But I'm going to return this gun to the man uh, set up for three inch which means let's go through it again. Steel ring, bevel up. Bronze ring next. The next steel ring, bevel down. The next steel ring goes on top of this ring, bevel up, and then your bronze piece. Now you're set up and ready to go. Now here's a critical thing on these. Just a drop or two of motor oil. You don't need a lot. Put it on and spin it. That's critical that you keep a little lube on that action tube. So that gun has now been rebuilt and it's ready to go, uh, and uh, if it's uh, one that's had a collapsed tube, you'll see a big difference because it will uh, really tame it down on recoil. Now, let's lay that out of the way. I have here a two and three quarter gun, and I'm going to, when you uh, install your rebuild kit, your action spring and all goes in the same way, there's no difference. Now. I'm going to show you the uh, the uh, friction ring setting on the two and three quarter. Very simple. This one is set up. I just bought this gun at the Cabela's store here locally last week, and it's set up for light loads. I'll show you how I know that because one of my steel ring, the one steel ring is down on the bottom of the underneath the magazine tube, and that's just a storage area. Is all that is. You put it in your pocket, as I say, and you'll probably lose it when it goes through the washer. But for storage purposes, just put it down under the uh, uh, the uh, recoil spring. And then slide your recoil spring on. Then your bronze piece here, you'll see it looks a little different. It's a little whiter. Uh, put this with the bevel up. Bevel up. And it slides on. 
This one doesn't really need any tweaking. It feels pretty good. When that bronze piece slides on, you want a little friction to it. You don't want to go on real tight. Uh, so uh, slide it on like so. And uh, I'm going to do it when I return these guns after I rebuild them. I always set them up for heavy loads. And I say shoot them with heavy loads. Sometimes they'll shoot the lighter loads when on a heavy setting. If, they, if it does, leave it that way. Put your steel ring on, bevel up. Bronze ring on, bevel up. This gun is now, two and three quarter gun is set up to shoot heavy loads. Now, I'm going to put this back together here and kind of get it out of my way. And then I'm going to show you a Model 11 Remington. Uh, Model 11 Remingtons and American Brownings. We have a rebuild kit for those. There's really not much difference between them and a Belgian-made Auto 5. Okay. Here is a uh, Model 11. I bought this old beater up at uh, Cabela's the other day also just because I wanted to show how to uh, rebuild them. Now, a Model 11, basically, it, it works the same way an Auto 5 does. They're not as popular as the Belgian-made guns because they're heavier. Uh, parts are kind of obsolete and a little hard to get, but the rebuild uh, is basically the same. We have a kit. It's the same thing. Now, you'll see on a Model 11, these rings are a little taller, uh, a little thicker. In my kit, the ring's not going to be that thick. It doesn't matter. It that's, really doesn't mean a thing. Uh, I'm going to set this gun up for light loads. So I'm going to put the uh, ring on the bottom with the bevel down so the flat is, so the spring can go, your recoil spring can go against the flat. And then slide on your uh, recoil spring. Let's try it this way. It's going a little tighter that way. I don't want a lot of binding. Oh, that's perfect right there. And then in our kit, you have a new bronze piece and a friction spring goes around the bronze piece. Now, what I haven't shown, um, but it's in our kit, you'll see if there is a buffer in the back of the, uh, the Model 11s and sometimes in the American Brownings. Uh, in our kit, you have a buffer. And you'll see it down in there. Oftentimes it'll be missing. Uh, other times it's just pretty beat up and needs to be replaced. And you just pry him out of there and he pocks him in place. In our rebuild kit, that's the only difference uh, between the Belgium made uh, rebuild kit and the American Brownings or the Model 11s. There will be a buffer enclosed. And uh, those buffers are just epoxied in place. But other than that, to rebuild your American Browning or your Model 11. It's the same thing when you, I give you some pointers here. Uh, you see this particular one has no lock screws on it. Uh, makes it easier to take apart. Uh, you have a lock screw here. This screw right here is not a screw. It's a pin, so it's not going to come out by trying to twist it out with a screwdriver. You just push it out. Um, so the, it has another screw on the uh, uh, this, this is a lock screw on the magazine tube here. Don't need to take that out. So basically to rebuild a uh, Model 11, treat it just about the same way you do an Auto 5, and uh, you'll be good to go. Um, this particular one, uh, I bought it the other day, and I haven't cleaned it or anything, but I'm going to do that and um, go ahead and put a kit in this one while I'm at it. So that's basically all you need to know to install your new rebuild kit. Uh, on your uh, Model 11s or on your Belgian-made Brownings, and uh, it'll make those guns, it'll tame them way down on recoil.